Welcome back to part five of this first and third person player controller course. Last time we added in turning in place, strafing and walking. In this part, we'll be adding in slope handling, step handling and solving some advanced edge cases so you can have a smooth character controller that doesn't glitch out. Let's go ahead and get started. So I just want to make sure everyone has the right settings at this point. Make sure your accelerations and your speed are close to the values here. And one more thing that's really easy to miss is the camera settings for damping. I set these to 0.1 earlier, but uh, it makes things much, much smoother if you set this to a lower value than the default. And one more thing is you can mess around with the FOV a bit if you want to make it a little bit larger. Okay. For slope handling, the very first thing I'm gonna do is make some new shapes for us. We can open up the Pro Builder window and draw on maybe a cube and then a slope surface, but let's make sure to keep the slope under 45 degrees so that we can actually walk up it. Why not just try to walk up and see what happens? And yep, you can see that we have some problems. The first main issue we're seeing is that when we collide with our forward momentum, it's actually propelling us into the jumping state. So let's fix this. The problem really is that our ground check is failing and we need a new and improved one. So go to our player controller class and head into the is grounded function. I personally think the best way to handle grounding conditions is to handle it differently while you're grounded and while you're in the air. So I'm actually gonna create two different functions here. The first one is gonna be named is grounded while grounded and the second one is grounded while airborne. We're also just going to copy in our character controller is grounded check into the is grounded while airborne. So we'll keep that, but only for the airborne one. For the while we're grounded one, we're going to use physics.checksphere, which essentially is like checking a sphere collider for if it's colliding with anything. So first let's define our sphere position, which is basically the same as our transform position. But for the Y component, we want to make it a little bit lower than the bottom part of our capsule. This helps give us a buffer between our collider and our ground. So it's not super finicky, like how we saw it working with our default is grounded function. I'm making the Y position offset by our character controller's radius because that will actually result in near perfect ground detection. Then I'm setting our grounded bool to the check sphere function where we check the sphere at sphere position with our character controller's radius. But then we also need our layer mask, which we actually haven't defined yet. I'm calling it ground layers here, which we'll create in just a sec. Uh, then this last parameter query tr trigger interaction, I'm gonna set that to ignore so that we ignore any triggers in the scene. Let's go to the top of the class and create our ground layers layer mask. I'm gonna just make a new header named environmental details, then I'll write in our ground layers and okay, back to the grounded function. Now we just gotta change up our main is grounded function. So we're gonna do two different checks. If our player is in the grounded state, then what we do is we do the is grounded while grounded check. Otherwise we do the is grounded while airborne, pretty simple. Let's head into Unity and check things out. Okay, so obviously not so good. Uh, it appears that we aren't grounded when we should be. The reason is because actually the ground layers parameter that we just made is currently set to nothing. So we gotta change that to default so our sphere check actually works. We also need to remember to set our player prefab to a non-default layer. So let's add in a layer named player. Then we can change our player over to the player layer. And okay, now back into play mode. Things are working as you can see and we can run up slopes, although it does look like we have maybe a few problems. Obviously, I'm just kind of running in place here, which is bad. And then also if we're sprinting, it looks like I actually come off the ground when I run past the top of the slope. Let's head into our player controller class and fix a couple of these issues. So one, let's move this line up above so that we're not setting our velocity to a negative value every single time. Then I'm gonna create a variable named anti-bump here, which will prevent us from skipping on the ground. So if we're grounded, we'll always be using our anti-bump value for our gravity. At the top of the class, let's make our anti-bump parameter. And this is a little different. So in the awake function, I'll set the value to our sprint speed. Why our sprint speed? Well, we want anti-bump to equal our fastest possible velocity so that if we're running down a 45 degree slope, we still won't skip. There's some trig involved here, but uh, to come to that solution, you kind of need to just calculate out some angles. So let's check out how this is working. In play mode, we can now see that we, we don't have the same bump issues. And actually, if we just run at a normal speed, we're also not sliding and slowing down, all thanks to our little anti-bump. Well, of course we have a new issue 
It looks like I can't jump anymore, so what's going on here? It's actually because our anti-bump is stronger than our jump velocity, so all we gotta do is just add in our anti-bump to our jump velocity like this, and let's save real quick, and you can now see that we're able to jump again. As usual though, there's a new problem. It's a bit hard to tell, but if I jump right now, I actually do not keep my momentum. I just jump straight up and down in place. And the fix for this is a little bit subtle. So back in our player controller class, you can see that we're getting a reference to our player's velocity, but then later on, we clamp the magnitude of it. We only want to clamp the lateral components, so we can just instead create a new vector three and only use the X and Z components of our new velocity. Testing this out, we now keep our momentum. There's still one weird issue, which is only really visible when we're sprinting. Basically, if we sprint, then jump, we immediately hitch back to our run velocity. So I'm gonna change a couple things to address this. One, we're gonna change the speed cap to be our sprint speed while we're in the air so that we don't ever hit the limit of the velocity while we're jumping. But also I'm gonna create a different acceleration value for while we're in the air. So back in our player class, let's create a new public float named in air acceleration. Then in handle lateral movement, we'll check if we're not grounded. And if we aren't, then our lateral acceleration will be our in air acceleration. For the clamp magnitude, we actually don't need a new in air speed. We're just gonna be using our sprint speed since that's the maximum possible speed that we'll ever be moving laterally. In Unity, I'll just set our uh, in-air acceleration to something low, like maybe 25, so we don't have the same acceleration in the air as we do on the ground. Even though this is physically unrealistic, I think it gives a much better feel to a game when you can kind of lean and move a bit while you're in the air. So obviously in play mode, you can see things are now fixed, and here I am just kind of jumping straight up and down, moving while I'm in the air, and you can see that we have pretty decent mobility, but it doesn't look too bad, like we're darting back and forth or something. Let's forge ahead and start patching another very common issue, super jumps. So you can see right now, if I sprint up the slope, then I double tap jump, we actually launch super high into the air. That's because we're effectively double jumping, so we need to prevent this super bouncing. Let's open up our player class. Now, some people like to solve this issue by using a jump timer, which effectively prevents you from jumping a second time for a short amount of time after the first jump. That is a perfectly fine way of doing it, but I'm actually gonna do it slightly differently which is by creating a boolean named jumped last frame. So as soon as we jump, which happens right in here when we add in our jump velocity, we're gonna set jumped last frame to true. Then in the next frame, when we update the player state, we'll set it to false if we aren't grounded. Now we just gotta change up the if statement so that we enter our jumping or falling state if we're not grounded or we jumped last frame. This will prevent jumping in consecutive frames and also give us the minimum possible delay between allowing for a second jump. At this point, I'm just gonna do a little mini demo. So I can't super jump anymore, as you can see, and I also wanna show you how our edge detection is doing. Running along the edges, you can see that we have just about perfect edge detection. There's no running in place or hitching, and we also stay grounded even when we're extremely close to the edge. Now there is a problem when we're trying to climb the slopes. You can see that there's kind of this hitching on the corner, and when we jump, we also see the same type of hitching. To solve this, we want to dynamically adjust our step offset value. I have this set to 0.3 right now, but let's modify it in C Sharp dynamically. So the first thing we gotta do is cache the initial value in a private float step offset. We'll set step offset to the character controller's step offset value in the awake method. Then let's dynamically adjust the value in our update movement state function. So if we're jumping or falling, we set the step offset to zero, else in any other state, we'll actually set it back to the default. This makes it so that we can't just hitch up while jumping near an edge, as you can see here, but we do still have this hitching problem while we're grounded. So the best way to prevent this actually is by using the skin width parameter. Previously, we set this to a super low value, but it's actually better for smoothing purposes to set this up as high as you can. For now, I'll just choose 0.01, and you can already see that the hitching issue pretty much has completely disappeared. Now you can continue to further increase the skin width, say up to like 0.08, but do remember that this creates a visible offset from the ground on your character. If you really want to use this larger skin width for more smoothing, then make sure you just adjust the center of your character controller upwards to account for the offset on the skin width, like I do here with a value of 0.97. But I'm just gonna set the skin width back to 0.01 because I do feel like that kind of gets the job done.
All right, so wall handling is a whole new ball game with a whole new set of challenges to overcome. To test things out, let's first make a super high sloped wall. I'll just copy our prism and adjust some parameters. And basically the problem is if we just jump and run against this high sloped wall, we just get stuck. So first of all, we shouldn't even be grounded in this scenario. And second of all, we need to slide down the edge of it. I will note that if we run up against a flat wall, this actually doesn't happen. So this is really related to our momentum and our collider basically getting stuck inside of the wall so that the gravity no longer affects us. To fix this, I'm gonna make a new utility script named character controller utils. Open that up and this is just gonna be a static class. So I'll throw it inside of our namespace, remove all the mono behavior stuff, then make it a public static class. Next, make a public static function named get normal with sphere cast, which returns a vector three. This function is going to accept two arguments, the character controller and a layer mask, which we make an optional parameter and just set the default value to default layer. So the idea with this function is we're going to do a sphere cast downwards to determine the normal vector our player is standing on. So we can create a vector three normal and make the initial value vector three dot up, which would be like if we were standing on flat ground. So that's just our default. Next, to get a reference to the center of the sphere as our character controller's position plus its center. Then we define a sphere cast distance, which we're gonna basically make it half the height of our player plus our character controller step offset, plus a small extra amount to really just ensure that we are always casting far enough to get to the ground without missing. Then we make a ray cast hit and do physics.spherecast. Then we cast the sphere from our center point with a radius identical to our character controller's radius. We cast this down with our defined distance and use our passed in layer mask. Then we get the result in hit and store its normal vector in our normal variable. And finally, we just return that value. Now let's use the utility function from our player controller class. We're gonna create a new function named handle steep walls, which returns a vector three and accepts a vector three velocity. We basically just call this function and set the result to our normal variable. Then we'll calculate the angle using vector three dot angle normal with vector three dot up. In order for this to be a valid angle, it must be less than or equal to our character controller's slope limit. If it's a valid angle and we're falling downward, then we're gonna project our velocity onto the plane of the normal. This will make it so that we slide perfectly along the slope's angle. Finally, we return this modified velocity vector. Now we just call this function from handle lateral movement, but we're gonna say only if we aren't grounded, then we call handle steep slopes. Otherwise, we don't have to worry about it and we return our same velocity as before. One thing, uh, go ahead and just copy this code real quick. We need to actually use this again to determine if we're actually grounded. So we only throw this into our is grounded while airborne function, but basically this means that we have to land on a slope with 45 degrees or less in order for us to be grounded. Otherwise, we just are gonna keep sliding all the way to the ground. I do know that this is a tiny bit inefficient to call this in two different places, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now since I am planning on doing a refactor later on. So now we only return true if we're grounded and it's a valid normal angle. Let's add in a quick print statement so that we can check the angle that we're returning. Back in Unity, you can see on flat ground, we're returning an angle of zero. So that just means that we're on flat ground, that's correct. Let's jump on this wall now and see if it returns an angle. All right, and you can see the angle it's returning is 72. So that is larger than 45, our slope limit for our character. So as you can see, we aren't grounded and we just start sliding as we want. This slide detection actually just works really well. You can see I'm sliding along with the wall. There's no kind of hitching. It's, it really is smooth. So, um, you know, this is basically just forcing our character down with gravity along the slope. So this is awesome progress. We're nearly done, but there is just a couple more things to do. First, let's make a couple new boxes. One will be a super tiny little step and another will be a larger step that actually exceeds our step offset. For the small step, we just run right up and down it. So everything does seem to be working properly here. For the large step, we run against it and stop moving as we want. But when we run down it, uh, things do look a little bit odd. We don't translate into a falling state. And it also feels like we're just kind of getting sucked down faster than realistic gravity. The reason for this is unfortunately our anti-bump, but I assure you, there's a way to fix it. Head into our player class, then we're gonna make a new private player movement state named last movement state, and I'll just set this to the falling state for starters. Now what we're doing here is caching or saving our last state from the frame before, so at the very beginning of our movement state, we set its value to its current value. Now we can perfectly detect when we switch into a new state by comparing our previous state and our current state. Note, if we were using a more complex state pattern, we wouldn't really have to do this. 
but I'm willing to live with it because this solution honestly is pretty easy. So now in our vertical movement, I wanna detect when our last state was a grounded state. To do that, I'm gonna go into our player state class and make a new function. We'll call it public bool is state grounded state and pass in our player movement state. This is actually almost identical to the function that we have above. So let's just instead copy this and compare against our movement state passed in. Then our function is grounded state can simply call is state grounded state where it passes in our current player movement state. Okay, back in player controller, we can now call this function to determine if our last state was a grounded state. If it was, then we're gonna add the anti-bump to our vertical velocity to offset the anti-bump value. We also gotta make sure we're currently not grounded, so we are detecting a switch from grounded to not grounded. And the very last thing is we need to remove the anti-bump from our jump function since it gets applied automatically now. Okay, let's go into Unity and test. So jumping off the edge of things now results in us briefly entering the falling state, but only when the ledge is quite high. You can also see that when we fall off the edges on slopes, we fall to the ground at a more natural speed. Previously, we kind of got sucked down real fast from the anti-bump, but now we're offsetting it so things look much more realistic. I know this was a pretty deep, intense episode, but slope and wall handling are honestly very difficult topics, and it shows because even the default Unity controllers, uh, they don't really handle these things appropriately, as you can see here. This is me just downloading the default third-person controller and trying to run off ledges and run into walls. It doesn't work, obviously. So with that, we're done. Let's head into the demo and check out what we've done. As a reminder, I am releasing this course completely for free, but I put in a ton of effort and time into it. If you guys are able to, please consider supporting me on Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member. Those links are right in the description below. I'll see you all next time. Peace.